I bring you greetings from Brunswick, Maine. My name is Dr. Christina Bethia Odejimi, and we are excited to welcome our new students and family to the Bowdoin community. I have some wonderful colleagues here to help answer questions that may arise this evening. This is a time for you. So ask any and all questions as this will be the last formal time we gather before you arrive to campus in a little under two weeks. So we'll start with introductions and then open the space for questions to be asked via the Q&A feature. Um, we are slated for about one hour, so we'll end at 8.30 EDT. No question is a dumb question, so please ask away. And also be mindful that you may see us looking down or around. We are fully paying attention. We may not have that answer directly, but we have people working in the background to get you the answers. Um, so that's what we are also doing. So I just wanna let you know that that's what's happening. So I will begin with introduction again, Dr. Christina Bethia Odejshimi. Students call me Dean Odejshimi, Odejshimi. Odejimi, I'm just helping you all out. And I am the Dean of Students. My position is housed in the Division of Student Affairs like my other colleagues on the screen, which is led by Dr. Janet Lohman. So in my role, I oversee a few departments in the Division of Student Affairs. I work most directly and oversee counseling and wellness services, health services, student accessibility, student conduct. I work closely with that out of the office of the Dean of Students. So the class deans, Dean Quimby um, is one of our class deans that we have on the call. Um, and I work very closely with our Title IX office as well and with Thrive, which is an initiative geared towards first-gen low-income and students of color. So those are the areas I work directly with. Uh, Whitney Hogan. Hi, everyone. My name is Whitney Hogan. I am the Director of Residential Life at Bowdoin. So I um, head up the office that oversees housing and oversees the RAs and proctors that will be welcoming you all to campus and oversees some of our other really exciting student initiatives like the student leaders that end up living in our college houses every year. Um, I partner really closely with the Dean's Office, Health, Counseling, um, and also other colleagues across the Division of Student Affairs. And I have children who are about to head to bed, so there's noise and I apologize, but it's really good to see all of you and little little kids with pajamas might be walking through the screen. If you see things happening behind us, it's probably happening. That's the beautiful thing about this virtual space. <laughs> Welcome to our lives. Uh, Dr. Mendiola. Thank you, Dean Odejami. Great to see everyone here. Congratulations to everyone out there and welcome to Bowdoin. We're so excited to have you here and meet you in person soon enough. Uh, my name is Roland Mendiola. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, this is my going into my seventh year being at Bowdoin. I've been involved with college mental health uh, for about 15 years. I work as a clinical psychologist and director of counseling and wellness services. So that means that Everything pertaining to individual counseling, group counseling, psychiatric care, uh, wellness and fitness classes, as well as some online and telehealth, mental health resources, um, that's under my purview and happy to address any and all concerns or questions regarding that. So thank you again for being here. And uh, I will pass it to Melissa Quinby. Good evening, everyone. We are very, very, very excited to see all of you very soon. A uh, very warm welcome, of course, to our class of 2026 and also our transfer students. If you're on the call tonight, we're really eager to meet you in a couple of weeks as well. My name is Melissa Quinby, Senior Associate Dean of Students and Director of First Year Experience. I have engaged and connected with many of you over the summer through email, on other calls, through our pre-orientation events. And it seems like that was a long time ago, and now Arrival Day is coming up in just a few days, it seems. Uh, I oversee the first year experience, your transition to the college, so I will pro provide a lot of support and um, all kinds of resources around your transition, both academically and socially. So I see lots of questions coming in that we'll be able to answer this evening about how the Arrival Day is going to work and how the transition into the academic year is going to work. I partner very, very closely with 
basically every office at the college to ensure that first year students have as successful and satisfying a first year experience as we can create for them. And I really look forward to answering your questions this evening. All right, so we're going to jump right in. So please um, please put into the Q&A any questions you have and we'll get started. So can Dean Quimby, can you talk about when a student would get a mailing address? Yeah, it's a really great question. So first year students, transfer students, please go into your Polaris account and your mailing address, your campus mailing address should be listed there in Polaris. If you are not seeing that information in Polaris, just reach out to the orientation interns tomorrow at orientation at bowden.edu and they will support and assist you. But your campus address should now be listed in Polaris. What forms of testing for COVID are acceptable prior to arriving on campus? Is it okay to use an at-home test coordinated with an online confirmation service? Um, Dean Quimby, do you want to talk about President Rose's announcement? Yeah, it's a really great question. And I imagine many of you have questions about how to uh, do your home testing before you arrive to campus. So we do want to reference you back to the email that President Rose sent. He sent that message on the 3rd of August. And that listed is also that that email is actually also posted on Bowdoin's website under our COVID-19 information page. So if you go into the search bar on the Bowdoin webpage and type in COVID-19 communications, that email should be the email that comes up for fall 2022. There's a lot of information about what our policies and protocols are going to be for the fall. There's information about what types of testing, whether it's PCR testing or rapid antigen testing that you might take before you arrive, and also the guidelines around the timing of when you should take those various types of tests. If you have a specific question about like Binax now versus another type of test. I don't think that that information goes quite into those detailed questions and information, but certainly between now and arrival day, you could send a message to the orientation interns or check in with our health services. If you have, if you do have a question about, am I taking the correct PCR test or rapid antigen test? But there are, I think, many options out there. And yes. I think, I think most of them would meet the standards of what we're looking for, for a pre-test before you arrive. So I think it's PCR is 72 hours before your arrival and then antigen is within 24 hours um, that you're arriving to campus. I think this announcement that President Rose sent, I know sent, sent to students, but also Dean Lohman, I believe sent it to families as well. So families should have that information. What happens on arrival day after you check in besides setting up your room? Do you eat lunch on campus? Are there other activities? I got it. <laughs> There's a full <laughs> schedule. Right. So our incoming students would have now signed up for an arrival day slot. And we stage the arrivals to campus so every incoming student uh, has an opportunity to kind of move at a really lovely pace as we open the college. So you'll arrive to campus, you'll go straight to the Farley Field House where we will check you in. Farley Field House is located right next to Watson Arena, which is where you will be delivering any items that you might be taking on your orientation experience, whether that's with the Outing Club, the McKean Center, or the Bowdoin Science Experience. And so we'll direct we'll direct folks over there if you want to drop off some of the bulky items when you first get to campus, like maybe if you have a sleeping bag with you, or um, maybe you pack some of your trip belongings in a separate bag and you want to drop that off and not take it up to your residence hall and then take it back down to Watson Arena. So we'll create create a lot of guidance and support around that when you get to campus. You will move in, have some time to move into your residence hall, but we also um, will provide time to do that after your orientation experience. Like the purpose of arrival day is not to really like totally move in. Um, you know, you'll make your bed and do a few things, but we'll also have time to do that during orientation. There will be beginning at noon a variety of events. The college does provide lunch for obvious, our incoming students and our family members and guests who are coming to campus that day on the 23rd. And it's a lovely lunch. It's a takeaway lunch from our dining hall. And I don't know if you've heard, but we have amazing food at Bowdoin College. So we love feeding families and guests and just hosting people. And 
Um, there will be events for Thrive. There's events for students who are gonna be receiving accommodations to talk to our director of accessibility. We will have a panel with President Rose, with our Dean for Academic Affairs, Jen Scanlon, our Dean for Student Affairs, Janet Lohman. There will be some opportunities for families to kind of get a sense of campus, engage with some offices along the way. We'll have various areas where people can meet our student aid office or our student employment office. Bowdoin Votes will be outside meeting people. And then uh, we want all first year students and transfer students to be down at the field house by about 345 because that is when orientation begins. And at that time, families, parents, guardians, guests will return back to one of our lecture halls where we will offer a transition panel. So a team of folks who work closely with Dino Dejami will answer questions about what you might wanna know about your students' transition to the college. And then the day will end at about five o'clock. Busy. There's going to be plenty for you to do, um, but there will also be opportunities for you to pace yourself. So no worries there. And you will have a full schedule that you will get once you arrive to campus. And I should say the day ends for families, guardians, get guests at five o'clock. Students will then have their cookout. Uh, there will be games and things down at the field house. And then students will come back up to their residence halls where they'll have a quick meeting with their proctor and prepare to leave for their orientation experience. So just to make sure that that's clear. What time do students return after their orientation trips? That depends on the trip. Some of our trips are happening locally right on campus. Students are staying right in Brunswick and some of our trips are traveling up to four or five hours from campus. So on Saturday, trips will begin to arrive around eight o'clock in the morning and our last trips usually come in uh, around three o'clock. Our goal is to have everybody back on campus by 3.30 at the latest so that we can begin our meetings with floor groups and proctors and RAs. For students who play organized sports but not recruited, um, does Bowdoin encourage participation in tryouts for sports teams? Um, this example might be women's fast pitch softball. I would say what I would direct you to is to contact um, that particular coach directly. Um, if you are, have any interest in that and they'll be able to kind of give you the information around that. Um, if you get stuck or not sure who that person is, it's on our website. You could also reach out to the orientation interns. They can direct you appropriately, but that would be the best way to make sure you get that information. Let's see here. No, Deja, may, can I, may I add yes, one thing please, to that? Yes, please, please. So there are many intramural opportunities and also, yes, yeah, students do um, and may have the opportunity to, to walk on to some of the sports teams, some of the athletic teams. Um, I think there, there'll be lots of great information about the intramural opportunities during the activities and club. and club sports. There's a lot of, there's a lot of wonderful opportunities. Uh, Whitney Hogan, does no command strips also mean no command hooks? <laughs> I'm literally texting my colleague to try to get that answer <laughs> right now because okay. I was hoping that I could type it in. So I will raise my hand or I will type it in as soon as I get the answer. I want to say yes, but I don't want to definitely say yes. So give me a hot second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, do when we return from our orientation trips, do we meet with our academic advisor before or after the academic fair? Great question. So on Monday, which that date, as I wrote it down, it's the 29th. So on Monday morning, the 29th, you will go to meet your pre-major academic advisor at their office and you will have your first meeting with all of the other pre-major advisees in that advisor's cohort. So that meeting will happen at 9.15 in the morning. You will have a half hour just to introduce each, everybody will do introductions and you will also during that time set up your appointment for your afternoon individual advising appointment to begin the process of um, identifying courses that you might want to select and submit as your first round choices. So the academic fair, not every advisor, but many advisors will walk with their advisees over to the academic fair. And then the academic fair will take place where they'll have a chance to connect with all the different departments on campus, um, make any kind of um, 
connections to faculty that you want to talk to about classes they might be teaching, learn about all, all of that. And then in the afternoon, you'll have your individual appointment. Then the round one results will run Monday night and Tuesday morning, first year students, transfer students, well, actually transfer students have a separate registration. We can talk about that, but first year students will then meet with their advisors again on Tuesday morning. And then lastly, on Tuesday evening, there is one ad drop round for first year students before classes begin on Wednesday. So I believe we answered, there was a few questions around academic advisors and when you're building your schedules and how that works. And so that was just kind of answered for you. So several of you all asked that question. Uh, let's see here. When will we receive our laptops? We were working on that today. <laughs> We were. <laughs> so we are excited about this. So you, when you return from your orientation experience, there will be a window of time where IT will be distributing laptops down at the Farley Field House. And we will also have an opportunity on Sunday morning for any students, for example, it has happened that a van gets a flat tire or a trip might roll in a little bit later than expected. So if for some reason you happen to be on a trip that comes in a little bit later on Saturday, don't worry. Uh, there will be time for IT to distribute laptops on Sunday morning as well. So um, laptop distribution will be happening Saturday and your orientation trip leaders will have been and will be again instructed that as soon as your trip has been cleaned up and the pots have been scrubbed and the tents have been hung to dry or whatever it is that you need to pack up and put away, you will be directed to go straight down to Farley Fieldhouse to engage with IT to pick up your tech. What is IT? That would be information technology. Thank you. Sure. Um, are there activities scheduled between the O trips and the first day of classes? Yes, there are activities. Again, you'll have a full schedule. Um, you will not miss anything. You will really be moving in chunks across campus, probably by floor. Is that right, Dean Hogan? Dean? So, so you'll be moving by floor. You will not miss anything. So don't worry. Um, we will make sure that you are there. You will have a lovely proctor and a lovely RA who will make sure that you are where you need to be for that whole period of time. So um, don't stress about knowing what building to go to. We've got you. I see a few questions around shipping. Um, shipping a box. Uh, can the can packages be picked up the day, the same day? Do you have to wait till the 23rd? Can you pick it up on the 22nd? Um, there is time scheduled on arrival day for the mailroom to be open where you can pick up packages. I would say that you would not be able to pick up packages the day before. So on arrival day, there's a slotted time where you can actually pick up those pack those packages. Um, can you ship the items for your residence hall to the mailing address? Yes. So there's a few questions around mail and shipping. Hopefully I've answered all those. If I did not answer what you needed, please send me another question. I see it's the mailroom hours are nine to five on arrival day uh, per our lovely people who are sending us information behind the scenes. Wonderful. Is there overhead lighting in the residence halls? Is, is just the desk lamp enough for light? There is overhead lighting. Most students want a desk lamp. Um, a really super cheap or secondhand desk lamp will be just fine, but there is overhead lighting. So don't feel like you need to bring your own source of lighting. When in the first semester, is it appropriate to visit the Career Center about summer internships for summer of 2023? That's a really great question. And I, I am, I think there's always, it's always a good time to visit career exploration and development. It's an awesome team of folks. They will certainly be strongly focused on seniors at the very beginning of the academic year. And they also have a really wonderful uh, cohort of peer mentors who work with students. And so um, it's, they will be actively in attendance at the student affairs fair. We will have a fair on the Tuesday of orientation where all of the different departments within student affairs will be present. And you will have an opportunity to meet the folks who work in career exploration and development at the table and talk about exactly this question. Um, it is, it's not my area of expertise, so I recommend that you talk to them directly, but they would welcome meeting you during the first semester, absolutely. 
I've also was reminded around the mailing of packages, really, because so much mail is coming in at that given time. It's best to really just try to mail essentials and then look at mailing anything bulkier later. But if you need it, then go ahead and mail it. But just wanted to send that gentle reminder. When will our Bowdoin Health Insurance be activated? That is a great question. Um, there will be forms that you fill out where you, it will ask about insurance and if you need to waive insurance or if you have adequate insurance and health insurance. Um, I believe that your insurance activates around mid-August to late August. Um, so it should be activated by the time you are here. I will double check that while we are on this call. If, if I am incorrect, I will circle back and give you an update on that. Do and you just know, so you, me, the form was due is due on the 26th of August. So it would probably so, be in that time frame. And the yeah. our our amazing interns are connecting with our director of health services right now offline to see if we yep. can get a date for you. Thank you. Um, let's see here. We would like to know more about how roommate choices work amongst the four person quad with two bedrooms. Do students themselves choose on the spot? Yeah, so I would say there's one of two ways to do it. First is um, getting in touch with your roommates before arrival and talking about sleep schedule, um, thinking about whether or not you're going to be wanting to get up and go to the gym, like, like things like that, um, and talking about it and figuring it out before arrival day. If you aren't able to do that because someone is overseas or where they aren't having access to a phone, then we ask that everyone wait and do it in person on arrival day. So if your arrival slot is 830, we ask that you have either talked with your roommates before you pick a bed and decide which room you're going to be in, or you wait and you have that conversation in person. But it's really up to all of you to figure out what's going to be best. And I think the most important things to talk about are cleanliness and sleep schedules. So just making sure that those two things are going to jive with what you need. And how are the beds set up in a quint? Beds are set up in a quint in one of two ways. So a quint either, um, you, and you get to choose, you can either bunk the beds, which makes there um, more space to walk around to kind of like a more roomier bedroom for the bedroom that has three beds. Um, or you can decide to unbunk them and put dressers underneath the beds and have it be a little bit tighter, but having everyone be on the same level. Um, and so uh, I would suggest you come in, uh, take a look, try to figure out what's going to work for you and your roommates. You can talk about it beforehand if that's if that's something that you're able to do. And if you're wanting help with bunking or unbunking beds, proctors and RAs are able to help you upon move-in. Thank you. Do students sleep in the field house on their first night or in their residence hall? You'll be in your residence hall and in your room for that. Uh, Dean Quimby, when do the orientation trips depart? And yes, when do the orientation trips depart? Orientation trips start departing early in the morning on Wednesday. So there will be a breakfast for students in Morrill Lounge that will be set up by dining services. Um, I think the first trip leaves between 5.30 and 6 a.m. Yes, go ahead. Yes, please. Um, so command strips and command hooks are no-go. Um, students usually use tacks, so push pins, thumbtacks, or tape to hang things. Um, there's also a lot of like structural things in your room that you're gonna be able to hang things on. So if you're worried about where you're gonna put like your lanyard one key, you don't need to stress about that, but things like posters, um, pictures, things like that, thumbtacks, um, or tape works just fine. And that answers somebody else's question of how to hang things, so thank you. I want to just say it says shout out to the interns. They have been amazing. They are amazing. We love them. Thank you for saying that. We appreciate you. Okay. We were to, uh, a locker for a violin. Would this be available on move in day? That is a very specific question. And yeah. I recommend that the individual asking that question, please send it to the interns yeah. by email and they yeah. will reach out to the music department to determine when the locker will be available. Thank you for that. Do, 
Uh, do parents dropping off on arrival day need to do a COVID test as well or just students? Well, we would say that it's best practice that anyone arriving to campus should do a COVID test. Um, so that is something that we're asking because we want to keep our community safe. Um, so we're asking that people are doing the proper thing and, and doing the testing prior to arrival. And if they're not feeling well, um, to contact the orientation interns so that way you get what you need at home and then you can still arrive, it's okay. But we wanna make sure that people are well and that they're traveling while they are well. What is the main airline um, from New York to Maine? Are the shuttles to the airport regular? I have another question around that. There was an email about getting picked up from Portland Airport. Um, if we were coming to campus alone, is that still happening? How does that work? Um, I'm not sure what the main airline is from New York to Maine. I don't have that specific. I mean, we do have, okay, so we have D Delta. JetBlue, Jet Delta, Blue, American. American, Uni Uni United. United. Is there another one? Southwest? And, Southwest. And Southwest um, at the airport. Um, do you want to talk about the shuttle piece, Melissa? Um, My understanding, and I'm going to watch the chat to see if anything comes in from the interns right now, but that students were um, who anticipated flying were invited to sign up for, um, a, there's three shuttles, I believe, that will be arriving on arrival day and students have signed up for those. If you, the, all my buttons are going, they're typing. Um, so if you have not yet registered for transportation, it's very limited. Um, and so if you hadn't registered, be in touch with the interns tomorrow to check in on that. And they would be, um, oh, students have not yet signed up. Students just gave flight information to the interns. So uh, that process is underway right now. So check your messages. Two shuttles. There will be two shuttles, one at noon and one later in the afternoon. And students are currently signing up. So students, please go into your messaging from the interns and check and see. And if you'd like to sign up, we offer a limited number of shuttles to campus. You can also get to campus uh, by taxi. The breeze bus comes to campus. Uh, students, um, there's an Amtrak, you have to get from the airport to the Amtrak station, and we can help direct you to all of that information. And we are only transporting students, that's a really important thing to say, students who are traveling without accompanying parent, guardian, guest, uh, that is who we are providing the shuttle for. See other questions about vaccination. So yes, are we require that all students, all individuals to be vaccinated who are coming to campus or mask if they're not vaccinated. And this is particularly for guests, all students will be required to be vaccinated to be on campus um, for the year, um, unless there is a medical exemption and that should be in, you should be in communication directly with health services regarding that. Um, do does uh do all incoming freshmen get a laptop computer? Every student gets a computer. Isn't that amazing? Like hash, hashtag we did that right. So we're excited about that. So yes, everybody gets that. Do we buy books from Bowdoin? Dean Quimby. It's a great question. Thank you for asking. So Bowdoin is unique in that we do our course registration for first year students really quite close um, to the start of the academic year. And some students will be going through the ad drop the evening before. Faculty understand that first year students will have just completed their registration process. And so you will be now beginning to get information about buying books. The first message went out today about book purchasing. Uh, for first year students coming in, you will go through your course selection process and then the, the campus bookstore will be providing you lots of information about the best places to buy your books. You will also get lots of great information from returning students, your proctor, your RA about resources, about how to um, purchase textbooks. And then if you have questions, you can talk to me, you can talk to one of the other deans, you can talk to your faculty members, and you can talk to your advisor. There's a lot of support around the book purchasing process. I like this. Uh, do we get an iPad too, or is that a rumor? <laughs> Dean Quimby? It's not a rumor. 
like hashtag go boated, right? Okay. We're so there's, I would say if you want to learn more, go to Bowdoin's website. There's some really brilliant writing about this new digital initiative and the role it's playing in equity and support for student academics across the board. And I think our campus is really proud that we were able to make this happen. And it's just wonderful. And so go ahead and read about it. And yes, you will be getting lots of great information. And um, for those of you who have never worked on a Mac before, there will be lots of training from our IT, our information technology department, on how to use the computer and the iPad to the best possible, um, to, just to really utilize it and learn how to use all the tools on it. Uh, yeah, the computers are Macs. Um, what model? Um, I, I can't speak to that, so I would have to do a little digging for that. Do you know, Deja, may I say one thing? Yes. A very helpful reminder just came in from Dean Huzzy, which is that, uh, and I should have said this, and I'm sorry I didn't, many students rent textbooks. Um, so I just want to name that we have, a, students are connected to a rental place where they can get textbooks. And of course, many, many students buy pre-owned textbooks. So, um, you know, you, you may or you will elect what makes the most sense for you, but there are many options, not just buying new books. It is a 13 inch MacBook Pro and an iPad mini with an Apple pencil. Does it come with the magic keyboard? Just the pencil, no keyboard. <laughs> okay. Okay, what are some of the resources for homesickness? Dr. Mendiola? Yeah, I'd be happy to start off. I, I, I'm, I'm sure my colleagues here could say a lot about it as well. Um, thank you for asking the question, whoever asked it. Um, I think it's, um, I think sometimes people uh, hold back on these kinds of questions and I appreciate all the logistical pieces as well, but this is something on people's minds as well. And I will say first and foremost that it is a very common and natural reaction for students to have. And we see plenty of it in our offices. Um, and for a lot of different reasons, like hope sickness comes about, I would say, and maybe again, folks might hear, might add to it as well, but I'd say because for some of you, it's your first time being away from home. Um, some people have not been away from their, um, their local situation for, sometimes their whole life, at least some of the students that we see. And sometimes it's because there are concerns back at home or responsibilities back at home. There's different kinds of financial insecurities and a sharing of responsibilities. So for students to move away from that, that there can be a lot of um, mixed feelings. So we do see that, we appreciate that, and we want to support that. So uh, I was just looking up our numbers actually from a year ago and while we don't have the specific um, piece about homesickness and how, much, how the prevalence on that, we typically see, uh, so, sorry, let me take a step back. Um, we typically see about a third uh, of the student body uh, every single year. And uh, our, our data from about a year ago, about 18% of students were coming in for loneliness and isolation. And then you add another 12% that were coming in for relationship issues that could be romantic, that could be friendship, that could be family. So some percentage of their, of it in there probably related to some kind of family related or homesickness aspect as well. And um, I would say that there's a lot of different kinds of offerings. Yes, that can look like individual and group counseling, how to build out a little bit more community and get to know other students dealing with what you're dealing with. I'd say a whole host of different student activities, which includes in from our realm, uh, wellness and fitness um, kinds of resources like meditation, yoga, Tai Chi classes. We also have a weekly acupuncture and Reiki clinic to help with grounding and soothing and relaxation. Um, I also wanna at this time uh, take the opportunity to mention, we also have a couple different online telehealth resources uh, for 24 seven access. Uh, so that's um, students from anywhere can contact um, a toll-free number and have either 
uh, a chat exchange or a text chat exchange or a phone call or a video chat uh, with a licensed counselor. And we're starting this this year with a platform called Together All, which also offers an online, free online anonymous um, mental health plat uh, forum for college students where they can log in and sort of like a social media platform, talk about mental health issues in an anonymous way with other college students. So that's a big asset to us this year. And then the last thing I want to say too is that comes to mind is it was very intentional for us and a lot of institutions actually to bring about um, fall break where it is because the data showed that um, that was the point uh, after the start of the academic year where students were starting to feel the pressures in a different way, the, the sort of initial honeymoon phase was starting to wear off and they did feel the impact of homesickness. So fall break lands where, where it does, so that gives students a break. And there's this aspect of um, maybe the um, folks from the student uh, Dean of Student Office could mention also the capacity to, to travel home and how that's supported by the college as well. But those are the immediate things uh, that come to mind. Dean mind. Hogan, do you want to talk about um, our proctors and RAs, our residential staff? Yeah. Um, so our residential life student staff is really amazing. It's a staff of 80 students, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And they arrive on campus um, a, pretty much about a week before you all arrive for a pretty extensive training. Um, staff is about half new, half returners. Um, and every first year floor has a dedicated proctor. So someone that lives on that floor with their first year cohort, as well as an RA who lives in an upper class building, but spends a lot of time on the floor and partners with the RA. Um, and so they can be a really good touch point for you. Um, they've all been through one year at Bowdoin at least. Um, lots of them have really good tips and tricks and um, ways to support you through the transition, including homesickness, and know where to point you if you're concerned or wanting extra support. So um, you will meet them on day one, and they will be with you for the whole year and pretty intensively through orientation. And so I suggest that if you're having that homesick feeling, know you're not alone, and they can be a good first stop. Thank you. All right. Let's Should see. we give two updates that just came in? So sure, please. Num number one update, it sounds like we're going to need to put up an FAQ tomorrow regarding the health insurance start date. So uh, pay attention to our FAQ page tomorrow, and we will make sure that that information goes live tomorrow. And then uh, we have the dates for our family weekend, which I think is helpful for the question about homesickness and that piece. So our family weekend this year will take place on October 21st and 22nd. And Whitney, would you like to talk about fridges? I would like to talk about fridges. So um, there's some confusion about whether or not first year spaces have fridges. They don't. We had fridges um, back when we were really in lockdown and we were doing exclusively takeout from the dining hall because we wanted people to be able to have a place to keep their food. Um, some of the buildings have communal fridges. Uh, but your individual room won't have one. And so if you're interested in having a fridge, I would coordinate with your roommates, figure out who is going to bring one. There's also a really great company that you can use to rent the fridge and then return it at the end of the year. And it's incredibly reasonable. It's on the orientation page. It's called ReFridge. Um, and then finally, I don't want anyone to feel like they need to have a refrigerator. So um, there's like three full meals a day. Lots of people end up, you know, having like a really old yogurt in their fridge and nothing else. And so don't feel like it's something that you need to bring, but it's not going to be provided, but check out ReFridge and the links on the orientation page. I'm scanning through questions and I'm seeing things just around arrival day as far as like, when do I get my one card? You will get your one card on arrival day. Um, questions around, you know, what does it look like for parents on arrival day? There will be uh, events when you get your full schedule. There will be events where it's say just for students only. They'll have events that say for parents only. There's lunch and other things that you may need to check out. So there's plenty to do there. I'm seeing questions around, um, you know, how 
uh, dining hall uh, or will the both dining halls be open there's a dining hall that's directed for arrival day and so you will see that notated again on the schedule and then there's questions around classes and when students will register for classes um, add and drop period and meeting advisors beforehand I think there was maybe a specific question about a pre-med advisor before course registration Dean Quimby do you want to just give that registration timeline one more time Yeah. Um, okay. So first, uh, the orientation interns will be sending out posting uh, probably within a few days, our arrival day information sheet and a map of campus. And so it's the information is coming. We just want to make sure that we've crossed all of our T's and dotted all of our I's and just make sure everything, we want to make sure the document is in order before we post it for you. So it's coming very soon. And that will have the full schedule of events for arrival day and a, a comprehensive map of campus about where everything is happening. So that's coming soon. Uh, course registration. So on Sunday afternoon, which is the, so first, when you return from your orientation experience, you will be able to view your pre-major academic advisor in Polaris. So the information regarding your advisor will be available that Saturday when you get back from your trip. Sunday, there's a block of time dedicated in the afternoon for preparation for registration. So there will be a registration panel where you will learn our registration systems in Polaris. There will be information about how to use Polaris and some tutorial sessions. There will be the opportunity to go to consultations across campus. The consultations do include a consultation with our pre-health professional advisor, uh, there are opportunities for students who are gonna engaging in music, chamber choir, there are auditions. There's all kinds of pre-academic events happening on Sunday afternoon in preparation for Monday's first round registration process. You will have all the information you need by Sunday afternoon. And yes, yeah, somebody asked the question, should I be looking at the course catalog? Yes, by all means, go ahead and go in and start looking at things. Not all of the courses are live and available. You can't view everything right now, uh, but seminars will load. So there'll be lots of information. Go ahead and go in there and look uh, in Class Finder. Monday morning, you will meet as a group with your new academic advisor, and then you will go to the academic fair and in the afternoon, you will have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your academic advisor, and you will select and submit your round one course requests. We do not have a competitive first round of registration. So all of the requests for courses are submitted at the same. They submit all through the afternoon, but the algorithm does not run until all of the, recourse, the course requests have come in. So if you meet with your advisor at 1 p.m. and somebody else meets with their advisor at 4 p.m., you both have the same equity at getting the course requests that you have submitted into the system. So you don't have to be like, oh, I have to meet with my advisor earlier. It doesn't matter what time in the afternoon that you meet with your academic advisor. The algorithm will run on Monday evening. And when you wake up on Tuesday morning, your first round requests will be posted as whether or not you receive those requests. So some of you will receive all four of your round one requests, and some of you might receive one of your first round requests. Everybody then goes back to meet with their pre-major academic advisor again, whether you got all four of your requests or only one of your requests, you will go through your round one, round two request process, or you will consider whether you're going to do an ad drop process. So that meeting with the advisor is a really great opportunity to talk further about your academic plan. And then round two requests will go through the system and those will be posted. Usually those post right before convocation on Tuesday afternoon. And then after convocation and after the lobster bake, we host one ad drop round, which is the only first come first serve academic round you will ever have in your time as a student at Bowdoin College. And that round takes place on Tuesday evening for a few hours. The round is open, I think for three to four hours. And then classes will begin on Wednesday morning. I hope I answered all of the questions comprehensively, um, but feel free to, send more in or chat to the interns tomorrow and we'll get back to you. Thank you. Um, let's look here. Are dining halls open during fall and Thanksgiving break? Go ahead, Dean Quimby. Yes. <laughs> so Sorry. 
students will receive messages through the semester regarding dining hall hours around breaks. It's common for only one dining hall to be open during certain breaks. Um, typically during Thanksgiving, the dining hall does close for one day. Sometimes that is Thanksgiving and we have offices that are providing opportunities for students to gather to eat together. So rest assured, there will be lots of information. There are too many details to this question to answer on this call, but rest assured students are constantly going to be receiving information prior to college closures around housing. Uh, dining and, and what transportation options the BSG might be supporting for students to travel. Uh, laptops that you are receiving should suffice for most of the classes. So it is up to you whether or not you want to bring an additional laptop. I'm seeing that question. Um, the technology does not come with my understanding with protective cases. You would need to secure that on your own. Classes on the first day typically start at 8.30? Uh, we have an 8 a.m. block. 8 a.m. block, thank you, 8. Um, let's see here. Can I still rent or borrow supplies for orientation trips from the outing club? Dean Quimby? Yes, you may, and there will be an opportunity to do so on arrival day. If there's problems with technology, you will work directly with our IT department to solve that issue with your technology. And that's one of the things that they'll go over when they talk with you. Um, thank you. Wow, go Bowden. Yes, we appreciate it. Um, the schedule, as she said, is getting posted. It'll be posted very soon. Who should we contact to make sure AP and for credit summer classes are transferred in? You would need to contact the registrar's office. So they would work directly with you and tell you what you need to do to make sure that those credits are transferred in correctly. If students take a daily medication, is there a way that you recommend that, they're that they transfer their prescriptions? Is it through student health? Is there a pharmacy and walking distance from campus? Yes, we have a uh, Hannaford Grocery has a pharmacy. We have Walgreens Pharmacy. CVS is down the road if people prefer that. That's more drivable than walkable. But the Walgreens and the Hannaford are right there in town, so you can do that. May I add something? Absolutely. Please use health services. They're amazing. Uh, if you, I think it's really important and wonderful opportunity for students to learn how to utilize health systems and networks moving through college and beyond. We have an incredible health services team as we have an incredible counseling team. And uh, you can go up and just meet with them, have a confidential consultation. You can talk with them about the best way to do um, you know, prescriptions, other questions you have, but I really recommend getting to know our health services team. They're really terrific. What shuttles are available to the airport during vacation and back? I, I do know that sometimes the Bowdoin student government hosts um, opportunities for people to shuttle to and from airports. And so more to come on that as you come through the academic year. Um, can students and families leave campus to pick up room items um, from the store once arriving and unloading? Yes, you are welcome to do that. Um, I don't know what the weather's going to be like yet, but keep your eye on it because we have, we, we will have move in regardless. We have been in a torrential downpour and we've been in blazing sun and we've been in a nice cool day, but we will be here. So just be prepared. Keep looking at the weather for that. Uh, it, the days between we come back from our orientation trip to the first day of classes, are there events for families and students or just students at that point? Once uh, five o'clock hits on arrival day, that's when families depart from campus. Students then have commitments that evening and then they leave for their orientation trips the next day. And then moving forward, everything is scheduled for students only. Uh, let's see. Is it unwise to book my tickets home for fall or Thanksgiving break now? It is very wise to book your tickets. However, 
you should get your courses settled and then book your tickets. So I want to be really clear with you. You should not plan to travel before your last class has completed before any break. Uh, and it's just really important that you know that and just get your class schedule sorted and then look at your syllabi and then book your tickets. And I do understand that flight prices are expensive right now and the sooner the better, but I would definitely wait to make the reservations and just know faculty do not make exceptions just because, because of flight, flight schedules right before exams. So just, you're gonna have to stay on campus to complete your coursework and exams before each break. Dino Deshbe. Yes, please jump in. Um, sorry, I'm like frantically trying to type answers and then I feel like I missed a thing about move-in day and torrential rain and all of that stuff. I want to say that proctors and RAs will be there to help you move your belongings as well as staff volunteers like people here on the screen. And so um, like there are some people that realize that they only made one trip to their car because we have a really efficient group of people that will be happy to lug heavy things and awkward things. And so if that is stressful, just know that there will be plenty of hands happy to help you that morning or that day whenever you arrive. Thank you. Can you speak about FERPA? Yes, I can. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, that is FERPA. Um, so FERPA basically means that um, without the express written consent, um, college officials are not able to communicate around specific regarding that particular student. Um, we would need a FERPA waiver in order to do that. Um, what we have tell students is that they have that agency to do that if that is something to desire. This is the opportunity for me to speak with my families and I'm gonna focus on me families and parents and guardians. We want students to have the agency to be able to move in this experience independently. There are some things that we do anticipate that they may need assistance on, and we will, of course, work with them and assist them in that way. But there are other things in which we want them to advocate for themselves and be able to get the help and assistance that they need. But we are really trying to push students to understand this experience and be able to experience this experience as an individual and moving through it as they see fit. And so we do not communicate with families about grades. We do not communicate with family about conduct or mental health or any of those other pieces. It's really important to name and to state. And that I think is one of the biggest transitions that we work with with families in general, because you're now transitioning to an environment that doesn't require that and by law not allowed to. Whereas before, you are privy to everything. And that I would say is probably the biggest transition that I see with families. And so I really encourage you to have those conversations now, each other as a family, to talk about how you will be communicating certain things that are happening at school, what things are happening at home, but how you'll be communicating about those things each semester, because I think that will allow you to come into this experience, really understanding the expectations that you all have as a family, but also what we expect for you as a student and, and what the college will be looking for you to, how they look for you to navigate this place. So that's really important. Thank you for asking that question. Um, there was a question, Dr. Mendiola around hospitalizations, if, they're, if, if, if a family is notified, um, if there's a crisis or a situation regarding a hospitalization, um, can you talk a little bit about that, recognizing that we, go ahead. It can be big, yeah. you know, it can be long, you know, so. It can be big and I'm sure you and folks from your office could speak to it, uh, some of the nuance of, nuances of the, uh, uh, the protocol as well. But as far as uh, what we consider acute mental health crises go, that could be, that could rise to the level of uh, endangerment to oneself, uh, the risk of endangerment to oneself in a serious manner or endangerment to others, um, we would proceed to evaluate um, our own that would usually go through the sort of chain of command of um, security um, getting involved, um, the Office of Safety and Security getting involved and doing some kind of initial ass assessment and triage and getting our office involved to do uh, a safety check of sorts. 
but then typically also then referring to our local hospital, usually Mid Coast Hospital, to um, further do an evaluation of someone's level of safety. And in the event that someone does get hospitalized, um, we are um, required to notify parents when there has been a change of status for a student, which includes a hospitalization, basically when they have relocated from campus. That is a requirement. And so in this instance, that, that would be the case as well. Is there anything you all would add from, from your office as well? That's good. Okay. Thank you. Yep. How, how quickly or how soon can students reach out for counseling if they're having trouble transitioning to college? Would that be through health services? Health services will work with you on the medical side of, of your physical health, but you can also talk with them if things come up. Um, but you can reach out uh, through to counseling as well. Um, and you can email counseling at bowden.edu and they will direct you accordingly. We have about five minutes. And so what you will start to see is a lot of typed responses because we want to be sure that we are getting to all the questions while still answering some questions live. And so I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of what was happening. Okay, are, are there student discounts for students taking Amtrak? I'm actually not sure about that. Um, you would need to check the Amtrak website. If I get an answer regarding that, I'll definitely update you and let you know. All right, let's see, do you, athletes do not wash their own uniforms. Uh, the school has laundry services that the student athletes will utilize for their laundry. Quickly. Yes. For your athletic laundry, not athletic, your laundry. athletic laundry. Thank you. Do you know, Dejmi, it sounds like our um, viewers cannot see all of the questions and responses. So we will collect the questions and post some answers tomorrow via um, the orientation interns. We'll figure out a way to answer some of these questions by Instagram likely tomorrow. Okay, and also don't check privately, make sure you just answer them directly. We have Wi-Fi everywhere. We have yep. great cell service everywhere. We do not have air conditioning in any of the first year bricks. Where would I find the pre-orientation trip packing list? Uh, that packing list would be available on the outing club webpage on the Bowdoin trips webpage. And, um, I'll go find it right now and then try to post it. When is the class of 2026 picture taken? It is after the orientation trips return. The trip is taken on Sunday afternoon, right before the convening dinner. There you go. Will parents be able to have on-campus contact with their students after arrival day? This is yes. a great question. I would during orientation, I would not plan on seeing your student. They That's, are very, yes. very, very busy all day long, into the evening, through every meal. Uh, once classes begin, if you are from Maine, close to Maine, in the area, traveling through, staying in Maine for a few days, certainly. Uh, but during orientation, it can be quite difficult for students to step away for a meal with family or um, we're, we're busy. We're, we're really programming with students all day long. Schedule will be posted soon. Can parents see or help move in on arrival day? Yes. Osher, it's pronounced Osher. <laughs> They're like, how do you pronounce Osher? <laughs> someone had a quick question about having a mentor on your floor. Yes. And the answer is yes. You will have a proctor and an RA and then also an affiliated staff member, like one of the people on these screens or from another department on campus who you'll meet during orientation, who are also there to help guide you through your first year. You will also all have a Cub Connector. And a Cub Connector is a staff member on campus who has signed on to, and is really eager to meet all of you. You will meet your Cub Connector on the Tuesday of orientation. They will come to your final floor meeting to be introduced to you. 
And they will also serve as a connection to resources. You can ask that person questions. They will direct you to the spaces and places that might offer support and resource for you. So we're really excited that every each one of you will meet a staff member from all across the campus. We have folks from alumni relations, admissions, the library, um, administrative staff, all kinds of wonderful people have signed up to be Cub Connectors and each one of you will be connected to one. If there are severe allergies, yes, please be in contact um, so that we can be aware of those and make the appropriate connection with dining services. If we did not get to your question, because I recognize I have one minute left, so I'm going to still try to look at if I can get to any other quick ones, um, please email orientation at bowden.edu. They can answer any and all of your questions. Um, your meals, once you are here, are covered. Um, you, every first your student has a meal plan, you will have meals, it will be covered. And do students have access to cell service while out on orientation trips? Maybe, I don't know who your provider is, um, but if not, great, because it's time for you to connect with the other people on the orientation trip. Uh, let's really quickly see if I can answer any more. The schedule for arrival day and the map will post to the orientation webpage, and we will probably send out an Instagram post and an email to let you know that it has posted. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. Keep your ears open. Keep paying attention. The schedule will come out, I would imagine, probably early next week and be happy if it comes sooner. Do um, th Does the health center offer flu shots? Flu shots will be required. Um, they will offer several flu clinics over the course of the fall semester and maybe even in the spring, depending on when they get their batches in. So that will be something available that you will be able to receive on campus. It is 8.30. Hold on, we have to say one thing. We have been asked to very specifically mention that students do not take their phones with them on the orientation trips. They're the the trip uh, there you leaders go. do collect the phones and that is really specific so that the group can um, be in that space together. Uh, the also so that leaders, it's also so that you don't drop your phone in the water or off a mountain right. and then not have a phone. And the O trip leaders will of course have phones in case of emergency. So just be aware of that. And um, yeah. International students will be in their room on arrival day when they do arrive. And so that is something that will happen. I did not, I was not able to get to all the questions. Some of the questions were duplicates. We were able to get to them. I apologize, but please, please, please ask your questions. Email it to orientation at bowden.edu. We'll be happy to answer any and all questions that you have. Our orientation interns, Jeremiah and Maya, will be happy to answer anything that you have. So and please if you don't... are an F1 visa holder and you have questions about your arrival on the 20th for ISO, International Student Orientation, which does begin a couple of days before regular arrival day, uh, Esther Park is available to you as well. And we're really looking forward to seeing you a few days earlier, international students who are F1 visa holders. Our time together flew by quickly because you had great questions. This is being recorded. It will be uploaded uh, to the orientation website so you can refer back to it if you have any other questions. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and speaking with us. If you see me on arrival day, give me a shout out because I want to meet everyone that I can. And thank you and have a great time tonight and safe travels to Brunswick, Maine. Good night.